Hello and welcome to Salga TV. In this episode, we explore the intricacies of revenue collection in municipalities and its effects on service delivery. Engaging with various municipalities, we focus on the strategies they have employed to encourage payment of rates and taxes, along with motivating communities to settle their bills. We assess the impact of these strategies and explore community responses. We also examine data that sheds light on the critical importance of municipal revenue collection in South Africa and the challenges faced by municipalities and communities. Coming up in this episode of Salga TV, we cast a spotlight on municipal revenue collection, highlighting some of the strategies some municipalities have initiated, such as the Twaneya Dima campaign. We discuss what made it a success and look at some of the challenges the municipality still faces when it comes to collection of rates and taxes. We then head to the city of Johannesburg where the CFO shares some of their strategies in managing the rate of payments and collections. And then we end off with the Salga Chief of Operations who provides a broad overview on the status quo of revenue collection in municipalities across South Africa. We look into how the city of Twane employed a campaign that addressed its staggering 17 billion rand debt. The Salga TV team engaged with the city of Twane's CFO to delve into the campaign's details. The city took a bold step, utilizing its authority to disconnect electricity and water services from defaulting government departments, embassies, businesses and households. This led to the disconnection of 1,061 accounts comprising of 553 government and 528 business accounts. The outcome was remarkable. By February 2022, the Twane Yadima Revenue Collection Campaign reported a successful collection of over 500 million rand within a fortnight. Join us to discover more about the campaign, its positive impact on communities and the plans to sustain this momentum. And here with us to discuss the importance of municipal revenue collection and the impact it has on service delivery is the Chief Financial Officer of Twane Metro Municipality, Mr. Gareth Mnesi. Mr. CFO, thank you very much for your time. It's perfect. perfect. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. Great. So to start off this discussion, can you tell us about the Twane Yadima campaign and what drove the municipality to start it? Yeah. I think essential of the more is that um, the city, as much as we are mandated to provide services by the constitution, we still need to, in a sense, run an effective business that's sustainable in nature in aid of sustaining the delivery of quality services to our communities. I think at the advent of the escalating debt book and um, our inability to honor the Power Utilities Park Service account on time was an indication that we really need to have a campaign that will seriously drive our credit control and debt collection procedures with the aim of accelerating what's due to council and the services that we are providing. So I think in the advent of our not to par performance from a liquidity and a funding perspective, the council had to come up with a plan in aid of collecting what's due to it, hence the birth of Operation Tuania Dima campaign. And could you provide the amount of debt that is currently owed to the city? as well as the list of the debtors. Yeah, of course. I think to date, um, with the latest figures, we're sitting at about 22.8 billion that's due to us as city of Twan. The breakdown of this is um, 4.4 billion rent, which emanates about 20% is coming from businesses. The bulk of them all, unfortunately, is from our households and our residents, sitting at 62% at an amount of 14.2 billion rent. So looking at, um, um, from an organ of state, it's just below 407 million rand, 2%. So the veracity of our book is an indicator that council is taken as a credit provider, meaning we're providing services and we're getting paid later, which has a significant impact on our continuity, taking into account that most of our services are due within a period of 15 to 30 days. So if we have 22 billion rand, at a date of 180 and above days, you can imagine the continuity and the subsidy that we have to do in order to continue council at large. So the bigger picture uh, on its own becomes very difficult for council to sustain itself at the level of, uh, of these debts that we have. Mm -hmm. Does the city have a debt rehabilitation program 
uh, who is it intended for yeah. and under what conditions can one be eligible? Yeah, of course. Look, I think from City of Swanee perspective, we do have a subsidy program where we provide free basic services to our communities. Um, these are communities who qualify to be indigent, meaning these are communities who are unable to afford a particular threshold in line with council policies. And apart from the campaign, what is the city doing to improve its revenue collection capacity? Yeah, I think over and above that, as an immediate um, short-term liquidity-based measure, we do have long-term mechanisms in place. Case in point, we've got an FRP that voluntarily was uh, uh, developed by council. This FRP is a financial recovery plan in aid of dealing with the medium to short-term, from short-term to medium goals of council. We've got a revenue management platform, which is chaired by myself in the, in the COO's office, in aid of unblocking the challenges, glitches that the operational teams on the ground are facing. So I think over and above this, there's also a funding and liquidity plan that we have in place, which will help us build sustainability in terms of the amount of funds that we have and the performance on the budget provision. I think Council at Large has plans that cover short term, medium term and long term from a sustainability perspective. Will the payment of municipal services from residents, businesses and communities improve the city's finances and will it also have an impact on service delivery? Yeah, indeed. I think, I think the straight and short answer to that is additional funds that we received helps us to reinvest into our infrastructure. The infrastructure that we'll be reinvesting in will help us to improve the quality of the services that we deliver. Access infrastructure and availability for us to provide services will in turn lure investments into our country and into our city, which will have a direct impact on economic growth. Mr. Munisi, thank you very much for speaking to Salka TV. So much. We want to encourage the public to take action and to ensure their lights stay on. Instead of neglecting bills, individuals should proactively step forward and establish payment arrangements to maintain good account standing. Simply visit the nearest customer care walk-in center to make these arrangements. In our next segment, the Saga TV team explore how the city of Joburg is tackling the collection of rates and taxes from various establishments and communities. Here with us to discuss the city of Johannesburg's municipal revenue collection operations is the CFO of the Metro, Mr. Deboho Moraka. Sir, thank you very much for being here with us. No, thank you very much for the opportunity Salga has presented. Um, we look forward to those, uh, this conversation. Great. Can you tell us a bit about the city's municipal revenue collection operations in more detail? So in the city of Johannesburg, uh, what we have done is, even though we've got entities that deal with um, the metered services space, uh, the, the revenue management and billing is centralized to group finance under myself. Uh, so when we talk about revenue operations and how it works in the city of Johannesburg is that uh, we have what we call the Josie One Bill, where your electricity, water, refuse, uh, property rates are on one bill especially if you are dealing with uh, what you call your the non-prepaid meters. So obviously if you are on prepaid, that bill wouldn't be there. Uh, but if you are not on prepaid, everything is on one bill. Uh, but the, the revenue management, revenue collection element in the city of Johannesburg is centralized to a shared service center under group finance, even though the operations are done at your city power, job of water, pick it up, for example. Uh, and that's how it works in terms of the model that we use in the city of Johannesburg. Yeah. And how much is the city owed? And can you give a breakdown about some of the contributors to this debt in terms of businesses, residents, and government agencies and departments? Yeah, so I mean, at a high level, the debt book currently sits at um, around 54 billion. Um, business uh, sits around 11 billion of that. Uh, government, uh, around 4 billion of that, then obviously the balance is residential debt. And if you look at that residential debt, the biggest component is water. Now, we understand that water is, is a constitutional right, is a basic human right. But what we have seen uh, is that our, our residents uh, are not paying for water or they're adverse to paying for water. Um, and, and, you know, from a power element, it's easier to switch off your power. Obviously, 
from water there's a constitutional element but we are at, we are implementing aggressive controls in the water business as well it's unsustainable that we are at a point as the city of Johannesburg where what we call our non-revenue water accounts for around 45 percent of what we buy from 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 rainwater if this was a commercial business uh, the shareholders would have closed it because we are government we've got a constitutional mandate obviously we continue operating but it, it is unsustainable does the city have a debt rehabilitation program who is it intended for and under what conditions can someone be eligible and also linked to the city's free basic services policy as well uh, obviously like you say a debt rehabilitation program is not for everyone number one and it has conditions that you will have to adhere to um, the, the most critical is to say pay whatever is current and then we will start looking at what we can um, write off in the past so that we can all start in a, on a clean slate um, but it also include certain conditions where uh, agree to install uh, meters uh, whether conventional or prepaid uh, agree for us to come in and read those meters because what we we have seen in some of our communities uh, our own officials are not being allowed onto properties and it's a community mob that stops us from doing the jobs i'm sure you've seen on social media where jmpd cars are being attacked we we cannot allow those kind of situations to to, to continue so so the debt rehabilitation program uh, will have those kind of conditions it will apply to certain residents. We are working through the final mechanics uh, of how we want it to unfold. Uh, we'll take it to council. Uh, but I, I think even at a council level, uh, the councillors are in full support of this program. And how has the non-payment of municipal services had an impact on the city's finances and its ability to deliver services? It, it, has, it has had a, a significant impact non-payment of bills has a real impact on how the city operates it is something that residents must understand um, a demand for a cutting of grass and i'll just use a basic example cutting of grass but you are not paying it means that there's no money uh, to cut that grass a demand for filling of potholes because i know it's a topical issue uh, but you are not paying it means that there's no money uh, for, for, for us filling that portal. So uh, it leads also to, I guess, a trust deficit between residents, business and government. But we must understand that it's a two-way street. Pay your services to allow us to, to, to dispense services that we are supposed to dispense. Right. And, and since the city implemented its revenue collection operations, have you seen any successes in that regard? So if you look at it purely from a number space, um, I would say there's been some su successes. So when we, when we started in February, um, in particular, where, where we firstly relaunched the billing war room, uh, we relaunched or we, we put in what we call the collection war room, um, there's been, a in terms of percentage wise, there's been a slight improvement in what we have been collecting. So in the past, we were collecting at around 86% of, uh, when we say 86, 86% of what we built. So we saw, uh, particularly in the last financial year, the last four months, we saw a 2% two per, two increase in that to 88%. Uh, and we, we expected that performance to lead into the new financial year. Mr. Moraga, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, thank you. Salga COO Mr. Lance Jewell shares his perspective on the Woodland Hills case in this context. Mr. Joel, thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Mr. Joel, can you share some of your key insights into the difficulties that municipalities across the country face in collecting revenue from ratepayers, households, and businesses? Well, I think the difficulties are informed by a number. Um, as at the reporting period ending September 2023, municipalities were owed in excess of 309 billion rands. Correctly so from business, from households, and from government itself. 
problems. So that is at the core of the problem statement around revenue collection is that municipalities deliver services. They invoice for those services or charge for those services and they're unable to collect them when they are due. That results in a huge backlog in payments uh, to municipalities, as I said, at the tune of 309 billion rands. So that is at the core of the problem um, that we have. And one of the serious consequences of low municipal revenue collection, um, as well as the impact that it has on service delivery, is the rise of residence associations, which are increasingly taking over basic municipal functions such as pothole repairs, public lighting and park maintenance, to name a few. Um, one of which is the Woodland Hills versus the Managu Metro uh, case, which was in court. Could you give us some insights into this uh, court matter? Uh, Wood Hills is an estate uh, uh, in the Mangaroo metropolitan area and essentially it is an estate that is uh, a consequence of a new township establishment um, uh, or an, a result of a new township establishment in the Mangaroo metro. And when Woodlands was established as a township there were certain conditions attached to each establishment. The first condition was attached to each establishment is that for that particular township, there should be a service level agreement between the municipality and that particular developer of that area uh, for the delivery of services. The second condition amongst many of the other conditions that uh, emerged through the proclamation of the establishment is that the refuse removal function should be executed by the developer or the owner of that area uh, for the households within that particular township. Um, and what had happened was that uh, at, well, Essentially, 19 years post the establishment of the township, the Homeowners Association that administers the township called Woodlands Estate or Wood Hills Estates um, is now looking at executing the responsibility given to them through proclamation. And the responsibility that has been executed by the municipality for the last 19 years through the service level of people. And unfortunately, the court found that indeed the proclamation allows them to deliver and execute their own uh, uh, household refuse removal function and do, they should be allowed to do so. And the municipality should cease doing that, but also cease the charging uh, fees for, for the execution of the services that they will now no longer deliver. And that's in essence, in essence what the case um, uh, is about. It is about a proclamation that takes a local government function, a municipal function, as allocated by the constitution, and it gives it or it signs it to another entity. And I think that is the weakness in the matter uh, because the constitution is quite clear on the uh, functions that are allocated and who has the executive authority to execute those functions. Mm -hmm. And the household function, household refuse removal function is a municipal function as outlined in the, in the constitution itself. Mm -hmm. And that's what the matter is about. Mm -hmm. And there have also been instances across the country where some of these uh, residents associations have started their own rate boycotts where they withhold the payment of municipal services to municipalities. Uh, what are some of the wider ramifications of such instances uh, where me community members, households, residents associations withhold payments of municipal services to their respective municipalities? Well, the, the, the common sense will tell us that, uh, that once you have delivered a service, 
you invoice for that service or you bill for that service. You then reuse that income to sustain the delivery of that service. The direct impact, therefore, is where a municipality has provided a service, it is unable to collect once it has built for that service. It impacts on its ability to going forward to continue to provide that service at the same standard, at the same level it has done in the past. So it impacts, directly impacts on service delivery itself. Not necessarily only to that community or to those households that are delaying and or rerouting the payment uh, of their of their accounts it impacts it could impact across the municipality itself because services are provided across the municipality mr joe thank you very much for your time it's a pleasure a strong revenue collection system is crucial for municipalities to maintain financial sustainability enabling them to invest in lasting projects and swiftly address unforeseen challenges. Consumers are encouraged to address their bills promptly, fostering good account standing. Fulfilling the obligation to settle municipal bills actively contributes to building a sustainable community with efficient public service delivery benefiting everyone. We need to take responsibility by settling debts at your local customer care support centre to ensure that we achieve the collective growth and development of South Africa. So step up, pay up and keep the lights on. From me, your host, Meralda. Until next time, Mr. Legam Nant.